Hello and welcome to this video. Today we will discuss one of the most studied histone residues and its modifications. I'm of course talking about histone 3 lysine 4, a residue that can be acetylated as well as methylated. Like all lysine acetylations, the acetylation of H3K4 leads to a more open chromatin structure and is therefore associated with transcriptional activation. Histone acetyltransferases and histone deacetylases regulate the acetylation of H3K4. So in terms of acetylation, H3K4 is nothing special and behaves like most other lysine residues in the nucleosome. The methylation of H3K4 is a little more complex. So let's start simple. H3K4 can be modified with 1, 2 or 3 methyl groups. Those groups are attached to the lysine by lysine methyl transferases, so called KMTs. In the case of H3K4, methylation is generated primarily by the KMT2 family. Depending on the interactions with other proteins, the KMTs can add 1, 2 or 3 methyl groups to the histone residue. The methylation can be removed by lysine-specific demethylases, so-called KDMs. In general, all H3K4 methylations are found in the promoter regions of active genes and therefore mark active transcription sites. But methylation of histone residues does not automatically open up chromatin, like acetylation does. So how is the transcriptional activation conveyed in this case? H3K4 methylation recruits a number of regulatory proteins that are able to influence chromatin structure. H3K4 trimethylation, for example, can recruit the chromodomain protein CHD1 as well as the PHD protein BPTF. Both proteins are able to open up chromatin and allow activation of transcription. They are also preventing binding of repressive complexes such as NERD. This stabilizes transcriptional activity. The list of H3K4 methylation binding proteins is steadily growing and the complex mechanisms of their interactions are yet to be determined. While H3K4 trimethylation is almost exclusively activating transcription, the mark can occupy the same promoter as the repressive H3K27 trimethyl mark. Those so-called bivalent domains are often found at important developmental genes. Those domains are still under intensive investigation, but it is believed that genes controlled by bivalent domains are inactive while ready to be transcribed at any time. This mechanism appears to be crucial in the exact timing of development. We will discuss the exact properties of H3K27 in a separate video. In conclusion, when you think H3K4, think activation. Both acidylation and methylation of this mark have activating transcriptional properties. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.